hello guys welcome back once again and this is part number four we are still on eastern cape september 2023 or prelim 2023 grade 12. the first time you're watching this you are landing on this channel please make sure that you subscribe to this channel you like you comment and you share i'm sharing free knowledge here for you to make it guys in this subject so make sure that you share with other learners is your sibling your brother hey whatever share your cousin you just share as long as it's going to be very helpful to them so just share with them okay so in our part four we are dealing with question number four so in question number four here we go uh mr uh mrs Nkoli is in a committee that is in charge of planning the metric farewell the committee is considering two different venues for the farewell. The cost of these two venues is given in the graph below. Venue 1 charges a fixed rental fee of 8,000 and an additional fee of 80 rand per person. Venue 2 charges the rate of 180 per person. So when you look at the graph there, you are shown how they behave when they are plotted. There's a reason why the other graph starts here and the other one starts here okay i'll tell you later on or let me just tell you now the reason why the other graph starts here in the middle here is because of this eight thousand when we do the income and expenditures we call that a fixed amount okay you pay it no matter that you're going to sell or you're not going to sell you must pay that eight thousand okay so this other one it starts here because it doesn't depend on any other thing there is no hidden cost cost okay when a person come pay 180 then we're done okay sure now name the graph name the graph that represent a uh, venue two only write the letter v uh, a or b venue two let's go and look at how the venue the, the venue two works they charge 80 uh, 180 per person so which graph represented is this line is this graph this one because you see it doesn't depend on any other thing if there is no person you don't pay if there are 10 people you pay this you understand so it's graph number b graph b is the correct one provide an equation for calculating the cost for venue a so like i said there they give us what 8,000 is a fixed amount that must be paid. No, it, it, it doesn't say this 8,000 is covering people. No, it's the, it doesn't cover people. Maybe it's for uh, when we go there, it's booking us a space. Plus, 80 rent multiplied by number of people. Then this is the formula to calculate the total cost. Now, they say explain what is happening at the point labeled x on the graph here is the x remember when you look we go to the income and expenditure and then the graph on top is going to be the income this one is going to be the expense this label here it was going to be a break even but then here they say explain what is happening what is happening is that the cost for venue a is i mean venue one okay let me do this uh cost for venue one and uh, venue two are equal okay for same guest for same guest then let's go to this one the committee eventually opted to go with venue 2. Verify showing all the calculation that with 180 guests attending, they would have paid 10,000 less had they chosen to go with venue 1 instead. So they saying they're going with venue 2. Kind of venue 2, it says, uh, venue 2, it says, 180 per person so we're going to multiply this by 180 to see how much they are going to pay so 180 multiplied by 108 so they are 
going to pay 32,000 because they have chose to go with this one now but let's see how much they were going to pay if they chose to go with venue number two venue one okay if they were going with venue number one we're going to use that formula it is going to be 8,000 plus 80 rent multiplied by 180 people so it's going to be 8,000 plus 80 multiplied by 180 that is 14,400 so in total that we're going to pay 22,400 22,400 therefore uh, 32,400 minus 22,400 is equals to 10,000. Indeed, they, they would have saved. Uh, did they say verify here? Did the question say verify? Showing all calculation. We, uh, I mean, the committee eventually opted to go venue to verify. So the statement is valid. The statement is valid. They, were, they would have saved 10,000. Now, uh, uh, the graph given below shows the relationship between the height and the weight of a high school cricket team. So we can see that type of a graph there. Then down when we go there, we have the weight status, we have the BMI, underweight, normal weight, overweight, and obese. Then we are given the BMI formula. First question, what does the BMI stand for? Okay, I think this one, uh, you know it, body mass index then what do you call a point that lies distance away it lies distance away from all other points in the data set as seen with point c we call such a point an outlier We can't say the outline, eh? it's not a soccer tie, it's not soccer. But in here, when we talk on the graph, we say it's an outline, okay? So they say, name the type of the graph we used here. Ram, I told you that we have lots and lots of the graph. So which one is this one? Is this a bar graph? Is this a line graph? No, this is what we call a scatter plot graph, okay? And let's go here write down the weight of a team member that is 120 centimeter tall let's go and look for that person 120 centimeter tall 120 is gonna be this one because this one is not 120 so what is the weight of this person so we're gonna come here I don't know if I will be consistent, but let me try. Let me try. I trust myself. It's a snake, but it's in the middle here. So we must also bear in mind what is the total, what, what does this line represent? What does this line represent? Let's start from zero. If we start from zero, we say zero, then we say two, four, six, eight. It doesn't qualify. So let's say four. Four, eight, twelve, sixteen. It qualifies so these lines represent the four 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 so now this one is in between you see that so it's gonna be 44 48 62 uh, 52 56 60 so what is this one this one here is 50 that means this person is 50 kilograms then they say, comment on the weight status of the person labeled B. Where is that person labeled B? Here's that person who is labeled B. This one. You see? It's on the line in this one. So I think, yeah, they are the same. So when you look at the height of that person, remember to calculate the BMI? We must first calculate the BMI so that we can check where does the BMI fail here. So we can check the height. How much is the height? Uh, okay, height, we're going to come to it. Let's start with the weight. Weight, let's look at this line. Straightforward. 
60 kilogram. Again. So when you look at the height, the height in centimeters is going to be, let's see, is this line exactly this line here? So it's going to be 144, and then this one is this one, 148. So this person, uh, this person, yeah, it's 148, 148 centimeters, 148 centimeters. So remember when you do the BMI, you can't use the it has to the height has to be in meters. So we'll have to convert the we'll have to convert the 148 centimeters into the meters. So when we do so, we are just going to divide here by 100, converting the centimeters into the meters. So it's going to be 1,48 meters. Therefore, now let's go and calculate the BMI. Where can I write it? Okay, let me just write it here. So BMI is equals to 60 kilogram divided by 1,48 1,48 meters to the power 2. That is equals to 60 kilogram. So now we're going to say 1,48 to the power 2. It gives us 2,1 one nine zero four meter squared we close the brackets now when we go to the calculator we no longer put anything with a square this square is only affecting the meters so it's going to be 60 divided by 2,1904 and that will be a bmi of 27,39 kilogram per meter squared okay then let's check where this one fell so see there and remember they say comment on the weight status so let's check where does this bmi fell we're gonna see is this less than 18 no is it between 18 and 48 and 24 no is it between 25 and 29 yes yeah. so what does it say what is the uh, weight status there the weight status says this person is over weight okay then let's look at the the last one what is the probability of selecting a person below 120 kilogram who is shorter than 1.5 okay then we're gonna do this let me remove this line because i need to draw another line let me remove this we need to see how many people are Below 120 weighs 120. 120 what? 120 is it the kilogram or the height? 120 kilogram. 120. We're gonna throw this line here. We're gonna throw this line here. It, but it's clear. It's clear. The line is clear. It's, the line is just yo. Ah, mine yo. Mine e e e hambe moye nias. But the line is, I'm just trying to highlight where is the line. Okay, I'm better now. The line is here. But you see, it's doing this. So now, let's see. They also talk about the height of, the height of, uh, what is this? The height of 1.5 meters. But when you come here, you don't have 1.5. We don't have the meter. So we're going to say 1.5 meters multiplied by 100. That gives us 150 centimeters. So we're going to look at the height of 1 centimeter. Let's draw the height of 150. So 150 is going to be between this line. You see this line? Between, remember this one is 144, 148, then 152. Okay, so it means that 150 is here in between these two lines. Even though mine is not, it's not going to be straight. I don't want to promise anything there. It's not going to be straight. It's not not going to be straight i was just looking for something else but I, I can't find any tool here to throw a line but the fifth is gonna be here i hope people can see what is it? you see i'm not specifically on that line it's going out this one here it's just here so we're gonna look at people below that okay 
these ones they are already at they are not less than they are not less than one fifth so we can count them they are exactly one fifth so they are not less than so the people that are less than is one two three four five out of how many people one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so only five out of twelve people they are less than 120 and less than 150 so it's 5 over 12 then they say give your answer as a percentage round to one decimal place we multiply by 100 so it's 5 over 12 multiply by 100 and that gives us how much 41,7 percent okay then this brings us to the end of our part number four. Wait for part number five. Part number five is going to be the last part for this paper. Okay? Let's meet again in part number five.